Hello friends, welcome to SJ's classes. At the very outset, let me thank all those who have joined this online venture. There are many out there who acknowledge and appreciate the effort I put to record these video lessons and give it over to you. Let me thank all such people from the bottom of my heart for doing it. Today we will read a one act play. The play is titled The Never Never Nest and it's written by Cedric Mount. I went through many websites, literary pieces, scholarly articles to give you information on this particular playwright, but, but I found it quite strange that I could hardly get any. But still, I managed to get a few for you. Let me just share it with you. Cedric Mound is a notable playwright of the 20th century. Some of his contributions to English literature are works like 20th Century Lullaby, To Cut a Long Short Story Short, and Nature Abhors a Vacuum. His one-act plays are very easy to be performed and is satirical, witty, and insightful. Most of these one-act plays expose the shams. Shams means things which are fake, counterfeit aspects. So most of his one-act plays expose the shams of contemporary society, just like the one that we are about to read now. Let me also introduce to you the one-act play that we are about to read. This play is a comedy about a young naive couple, Jack and Jill, who believe in buying things in installments. It is believed that the play is written against the background of the Great Depression of the 1920s, which gripped the world, continued through years, and wrecked many industries and businesses, and the lives of people throughout the world. Jack and Jill are believers of the buy now, pay later philosophy, and buys each and every luxury of life on installments and live cheerfully without being aware of the fact that they would be struggling under the burden of debt in the near future. The playwright Cedric Mound, through this play, satirizes people's addiction for buying things in installments. He feels that such couples would make a nest easily, but they will never settle happily. The double negative in the title conveys this impossibility of realizing a dream home of such people. So that is about the playwright and the play. Now let's start reading the play. The Never Never Nest by Cedric Mount. We have four characters in this play. Jack, Jill his wife, Aunt Jane and the nurse. The scene is the launch of Jack and Jill's villa at New Hampstead. The essential furniture consists of a table on which are writing materials and two chairs. As the curtain rises, the launch is empty. But Jack and Jill come immediately followed by Aunt Jane. So we have four characters in this play. And the setting of the play is the launch of Jack Angel's villa. And when the curtain rises, we don't have anybody on the stage, but Jack Angel immediately comes onto the stage, followed by Aunt Jane. Let's read the play. Jill. And this is the launch. Aunt Jane. Charming, charming. Such a cozy little room. And such pretty furniture. Jack. He says this very modestly. We like it, you know. Handy place to sit in and listen to the radiogram. Handy place means a convenient space. And radiogram is a piece of furniture that combines both radio and a record player. Aunt Jane. Oh, have you got a radiogram as well? As a car and a piano? Why, of course, Aunt Jane. You simply must have a radio set nowadays. 
this is what Jack responds to her you know, uh, a question filled with curiosity that they have a radiogram, a car as well as a piano. Jill, and it's so nice for me when Jack is away at business. I even make him move it into the kitchen. It here refers to the radiogram. It into the kitchen so that I can listen to it while I cook. Jack says, sit down, Aunt Jane. You must be tired and we have shown you everything now. Jill, what do you think of our little nest, Aunt Jane? Aunt Jane says, I think it's wonderful, my dears. The furniture and the car and the piano and the refrigerator and the radio. What is it? It's wonderful, really wonderful. Jack says, and we owe it all to you. Aunt Jane, yes, Jack, that is what is worrying me. Jack, worrying you, Aunt Jane? So Jack doesn't really understand why, you know, these luxury that they have you know, actually worries Aunt Jane. Let's see why it worries her. Aunt Jane says, Yes, that check I gave you for your wedding present. It was only 200 pounds, wasn't it? I didn't put 2000 by mistake. Jill says, Why? No, Aunt Jane. What on earth made you think that? Aunt Jane. She feels a bit relieved. Well, that's all right, but I still don't altogether understand. This house, it's very lovely, but doesn't it cost a great deal for rent? Jack says, rent? Oh no, we don't pay rent. Aunt Jane, but Jack, if you don't pay rent, you will get turned out into the street. And that would never do. You have Jill and the baby to think of now, you know. Jack, no, no, Aunt Jane, you misunderstood me. We don't pay rent because the house is ours. Aunt Jane is shocked to hear that and she says, yours? Jill, why? Yes, you just pay 10 pounds and it's yours. Jill, sorry, Jack, you see, Aunt Jane, we realize how uneconomic it is to go on paying rent year after year when you can buy and enjoy a home of your own for 10 pounds and a few quarterly payments, of course. So here we get the idea that you know they have purchased the house on installments. They paid 10 pounds in the beginning and they had to make or they have to make a few quarterly payments. And Jack says, why be Mr. Tenant when you can be Mr. Owner? Aunt Jane, I see. Yes, there is something in that. Even so, you must be getting on very well to keep up a place like this. Jill, oh, he is Aunt Jane. Why, only last year he had a five shilling shilling rice. A shilling is uh, the English currency. Uh, 20 shillings make a pound. Didn't you, Jack? Jack, of course, that was nothing really. I am expecting 10 this Christmas. Aunt Jane, suddenly, Jack, I have just thought of something. That car, is it yours? Jill, of course it is ours. Aunt Jane, all yours? Jack, well, no, not exactly all. Aunt Jane, how much of it? Jill, oh, I should say the steering wheel and uh, one of the tires and about two of the cylinders. But don't you see? That's the wonderful thing about it. Aunt Jane, I don't see anything wonderful about it. Jill, but there is Aunt Jane. You see, although we could never buy a car outright, we can enjoy all the pleasures of motoring for a mere five pounds down. So they gave 10 pounds as a down payment for their house and they gave five pounds as a down payment for the car. And as of now, they have owned the steering wheel and one of the tires and two of the cylinders inside the engine. And uh, Jill says, it's so, it's such a wonderful thing. But Aunt Jane realizes the fact. She says there is nothing wonderful about it. Aunt Jane, mm -hmm. and the rest by AC installments, I suppose. Jill, exactly. Aunt Jane, exactly. And what about the radio? What is it? Well, that is the, and the piano. Well, of course, 
and the furniture? Uh, I am afraid so. I suppose all you own is this leg. So she points to a particular leg of the furniture. And Jill says, well, no, as a matter of fact, it's that one. She points to another leg of the table. Aunt Jane, and the rest belongs to Mr. Sage, I suppose. So Mr. Sage must be the person who you know, gives this furniture on installment basis to, these couple, to this couple. Jill says, uh, yes, Aunt Jane, well, I'm not going to sit on Mr. Sage's part of anyone. She stands up. Now tell me, how much do all these installments come to? Jack, well, actually, he takes out his pocket book and consults it and says, actually, to seven pounds, eight and eight pence a week. Aunt Jane, good heavens, and how much do you earn? Jack, as a matter of fact, uh, that is six pounds. So his earnings come to six pounds and his expense come to around seven pounds, eight and eight pence a week. Aunt Jane, but that is absurd. How can you pay seven pounds, eight and eight pence out of six pounds? Jack, oh, that's easy. You see, all you have to do is to borrow the rest of the money for the payments from the Thrift and Providence Trust Corporation. Jill, they are only too glad to loan you any amount you like, or not of hand alone. Aunt Jane, and how do you propose to pay that back? Jack, oh, that's easy too. You just pay it, pay it back in installments. So whenever they are out of money to pay the installments, you know, they borrow money from the Thrift and Providence Trust Corporation. And when Aunt Jane asks, how do you propose to pay that particular amount back? Jack says, that's quite easy. You have to pay, pay it back in installments. Aunt Jane, installments. So she is fed up with this particular word. She is fed up with the fact that you know, they purchase everything and they even borrow money which can be written in installments. So she claps her hand to her forehead and sinks back weakly into the chair. But it is then that she realizes that she is sitting on Mr. Sage's piece and she leaps to her feet again with a little shriek. Jack, Aunt Jane, is anything the matter? Would you like to lie down? Aunt Jane, lie down? Do you suppose I am going to trust myself in a bed that belongs to Mr. Sage or Marks and Spencer or somebody? No, I am going home. Jill, oh, must you really go? Aunt Jane, I think I would better. Jack, I will drive you to the station. Aunt Jane, what? Travel in a car that has only one tire and two thingamis. Thingamis, thingamis means things which are unspeakable specified or things which of which you, you do not really know their names so travel in a car that has only one tire and two thingamis no thank you i'll take the bus jack well of course if you feel like that about it aunt jane relenting a bit bit little now i'm sorry if i sounded rude but really i'm shocked to find the way you are living i have never owed a penny in my life Cash down, that's my motto, and I want you to do the same. So she has always spent money, and she used to buy things, you know, with the money she had. She never owed any money to anybody, and she is really unhappy with the way, with the kind of life that Jack and Jill are living now. She opens her handbag. Now look, here is a little check I was meaning to give you anyway, and she hands it over to Jill. Suppose you take it and pay off just one of your bills so that you can say one thing at least really belongs to you. Jill. Uh, thank you, Aunt Jane. It's very nice of you. Aunt Jane, patting her arm. There, now I must be going. Jack, I will see you to the bus anyway. Jill, goodbye, Aunt Jane, and thanks so much for the present. Aunt Jane kisses her and she says, goodbye, my dear. She and Jack goes out. Jill looks at the check and exclaims, 10 pounds. So it's 10 pounds that Aunt Jane has given them. Then she hurries to the table, addresses an envelope, endorses the check and slips it inside with a bill which she takes from the bag, seals the envelope. Then she rings the bell. In a moment, the nurse comes in with the baby in her arms. Jill. Oh, nurse, I want you to run and post this for me. 
I will look after the baby while you are gone. Nurse, certainly, madam. She hands the baby to Jill, takes the letter and goes. A second later, Jack comes in again. Jack, well, she is gone. What a tartar. Tartar means a person who is very irritating. So that is how Jack addresses his aunt. Aunt Jane who has you know, just now given them 10 parts apart from the 200 pounds, pounds that you know she gave them earlier. So he calls her a tartar. Still, she did leave us a bit on account. How much was it? Jill says 10 pounds. Jack, phew, that's great. We can pay off the next two months on the car with that. So Jack has a plan for the 10 pounds that Aunt Jane has given them. He plans to give it to the person who gave them the car in installments. Jill, I am afraid we can't. Jack, why ever not? Jill, you see, I have already sent it off for something else. Nurse has just gone to post it. Jack, well, that's all right. Who have you sent it to? Jill, Dr. Martin. Jack, Dr. Martin? What on earth possessed you to do that? Jill, nearly in tears. There, now you are going to be angry with me. Jack, I'm not angry, but why waste money, good money, on the doctor? Doctors don't expect to get paid anyway. Jill, she starts to sob, cry a little, she says, but, but you don't understand. Jack, understand what? Jill, why, just one more installment and baby is really ours. She is holding out the infant a little pathetically as we black out. So this is where the play ends. We realize that even the baby that they have, have been, no, even the baby has been purchased on installments. So this is how Cedric Mount, you know, ridicules or criticizes the, you know, modern way of living, you know, wherein which you purchase all the luxury uh, you know, in, on installment basis, and you become, you know, you in, at the end you have a huge debt to be repaid. So I hope you have a clear cut understanding regarding the play, right, as well as the play. Thank you so much for being with me. I'll see you in another video lesson. Thank you.